And my exclusive interview with Michael Jackson's father, Joe Jackson, speaks out as he rarely has before. They treated him like Howard Hughes. They couldn't... Family couldn't get to him like they should have. This is Piers Morgan tonight. Man. Coming next, my exclusive and emotional interview with Michael Jackson's father, Joe Jackson. That's coming up. It's hard to imagine, but it's been three and a half years since Michael Jackson died. Millions of people around the world loved him, but of course no one knew him quite the way that his own father did. Joseph Jackson rarely gives interviews, but he joins me tonight exclusively, along with Dieter Weisner, his former manager. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. So, Joe, I've interviewed almost every single member of your family, uh, your wife, your sons, your daughters, Michael, and finally I get to interview the boss. Yeah, the boss, yes. The boss. That's great. Yes, I'm, I'm glad to uh, have you interviewing me because I'm going all over the world. I went all over the world to know me. Everyone says the same thing about you. Very tough, but he had to be. That you wanted the best for your family and you decided right from the start you were going to be firm, tough where you had to be, disciplined, and do what it took to give them the lives that many of them have since enjoyed. How, how do you respond to that? Well, I had to be like that way because um, during those times, it was hard and you had a lot of gangs there, you know, in the area where we were living. This is Gary in Indiana. Uh, Gary, Indiana, and, they, and I had to make sure that they didn't uh, get in any type of trouble and things of that sort. What your children have told me, almost all of them, uh, is that you found it hard, because you were tough with them and disciplined and wanted to be, you found it hard to be too demonstrative, to tell them too much that you love them. And some of them found that quite difficult to deal with. Well, and let, me, let, me, let me play you an example. I interviewed Janet. Yeah, okay. And she, she said this. Watch this clip. One time I tried to call him down. And what happened? He said, no, he said, I'm Joseph, you call me Joseph, I'm Joseph to you. So your father tells you one time, you don't do it again. So I've always called him Joseph. It's sad, isn't it? That he's... Yeah, it is. I mean, I wish, I wish our relationship was different, but I know that he loves me. So come on, why wouldn't you let your daughter call you dad? Well, you had all those kids running, hollering around and hollering, Dad, 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 you know, it gets to be, sounds kind of funny to me, but I, I didn't care too much about what they called me, just as long as they was able to uh, listen to me and what I had to tell them, you know, in order to make their life successful. This was the main thing. My kids um, was brought up in a way so they respect people and they never was on drugs. Um, uh, they never went to jail. They wasn't in no gangs or nothing. They were brought up professionally and was nice, yes. But do you have any regrets that you may have been a little bit too tough on some of them? Well, I'm glad I was tough because look what I came out with. Mm -hmm. I came out with some kids that everybody loved all over the world. And they treated everybody right. You know, Michael... He was he was a nice guy, but under the world, the world don't know anything too much about Michael as for how he was brought up. Mm. But he was brought up. I made sure that he respected the older people. Yes. Tell me about the young Michael and your relationship with him. Michael was a type of kid, you know. He was a good kid and very easy to learn. And he hit one thing once, and he could really do it just like the person that. Uh, he listened to doing it. And by him being that way, he was able to be Michael Jackson because he was looked good on stage. And when he performed, everybody loved the way he did it because he was that good. You physically disciplined your kids. Do you think parents today are too soft on their children? Do you think there's a lack of respect because of that? Yeah, they, they are too soft. One of the reasons I say that is because... Kids nowadays are killing their parents in, in some cases, and, and, and the parents say, uh, let's get into this uh, beating thing. There's no such thing as beating a kid. You whip them and punish them for something they did, and they will remember that. 
So they remembered it in such a way they wouldn't do it again. That's the way I was. It's not like that anymore. You know, many people say, well, you know, you, you can't hit a child. I interviewed your wife, Catherine, and she said this about you. I didn't think he was too tough, but in back in those days, everybody raised their children about the same. Mm. If you did something wrong, it was terribly wrong, you got a scolding for it, and you also got a licking, as they called it. Mm. But, but today, you can't do that. So Michael looked back at those times, and he said he was abused. You know, in those days, kids was real bad, and the parents should have uh, made sure, what I did, made sure that my kids was was good kids. Uh, uh, made sure that uh, they understood what I was trying to do. But s since Michael got uh, grown and has kids of his own, mm -hmm. he understand that what I was going through with. Let's take a short break. Let's come back and talk about uh, your life as a grandfather. You're a grandfather to Michael's three children, as, as well as others. I want to talk to you about whether you, you're as tough with them. Ever since I was born, Daddy has been the best father you could ever imagine. <laughs> and I just wanted to say I love him so much. <laughs> Perhaps the most touching moment for many of Michael Jackson's memorial, the heartbreak of his daughter Paris, back when exclusive is Michael's father, Joseph Jackson, and his former manager, Dieter Weiser. Tough uh, for the kids, that Joe, more than anybody, I felt. It was such a public thing, and poor Paris, you know, she's just a young girl who's lost her father. Very, very hard. What could you say to her, as somebody who's been through so much yourself? What, what did you say to her afterwards? Well, Paris is... Uh... Even Michael said she's a piece of work, you know, because, you know, most girls are hard to raise. Mm. Pierce, they're hard to raise. They're more harder than boys. But she's a nice girl, and uh, uh, most girls take to the father anyway, too, you know. But she, she, she's a good girl, but you have to work with her a little bit, too. Are you as tough with Michael's kids? because he's not around, as you were with Michael and his siblings? No, no. They, those are my, these are my grandkids, and uh, they'd be glad. I was just with them yesterday, you know. And so uh, with Prince and Paris, I wouldn't get out of the bed, you know. She was still in the bed, but Prince and, and Blanket was there, and they were glad. That, matter of fact, Blanket was making a video himself. Really? <laughs> yeah. And do you, when you see them, does it take you back to when your kids were young? Do you see Michael in them? In Blanket, I do. Really? Yeah, in Blanket, I see Michael there, yes. And, um, but the, they're good kids. They've been handled well, and Catherine was really looking at the, those kids, and, and they love their grandma. Mm. Yes, they really love her, and they obey her, too. Where were you when you heard that Michael had died? I was in, yeah, I was in uh, Las Vegas. I, I got a call, Pierce, I got a call one from a fan, and it says, Mr. Jackson, say, um, something is wrong. Say, I see uh, Amalas there at Michael's place, and uh, Amalas took off, and the fire, uh, fire department followed the Amalas, Something is wrong. What did you do when you heard that after you took the call? Uh, well, the saddest part about the whole thing was Michael tried to reach me. He says, call my father. This is before he passed. He would know how to get me out of this. But they, they didn't get in touch with me. They said they couldn't find me, but I was right there. Now, what bothers me, when he called for my help, mm -hmm. I couldn't help him. What was your relationship like with Michael towards the end? Because there was a sense that he was surrounded by people that were kind of keeping the family away and that the family couldn't get to him how they wanted to. That's very true. You know, he was, he was like, um, well, they treated him like Howard Hughes, you know. They couldn't, family couldn't get to him like they should have. And I, and I think 
that was very wrong for that to happen. But I guess that um, they had a motive to, to 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 keep family away. But I guess because they was saying to the fact that um, too many families hanging around may cause some type of a disturbance. But what we're trying to do uh, with this young man, yes. This huge concert tour that he had lined up, 50 concerts, knowing him as you did, do you think he was physically capable of doing that number of shows? Did you know he was doing that number of shows? Yes, I did know he was doing that number of shows. And it was a reason why. It was a motive for those shows because Michael's going to take that money and build a children hospital. Mm. That's what he wanted to do, to build for all the six kids, sick kids there, he, he needed to uh, to make sure they had the right type of help. When you speak about Michael with children like that, I can't not ask you about the court cases which scandalized his later years. As his father, how did you feel when he was accused of abusing children? Well, you know, that there was, there was a reason why that happened, and he was trying to... Uh, take control over Michael's life. Michael's paid out a lot of money. And what is it, something like $22 million, you know, to keep this thing hushed down. Do you, do you wish he'd never done that? I wish he had never done that, but since he done it, uh, the media, you know, didn't grab it as much as it did because it was hushed up. But, but Michael was afraid of the media because they would never get nothing right, you know. Did Michael... At any stage, did his behavior ever worry you around children? And the reason I ask you is, a lot of people felt, here's a man in his 40s, mid-40s, having sleepovers with young boys. And most people would think that's inappropriate. Michael wasn't a normal guy. Everybody knows that. But did you ever worry that the perception of what he was doing wasn't good for him or his image? Well, Piers... Michael was a big old kid himself. He was still as a, at the mind of a kid. But he loved kids so much, and things that they didn't have, he tried to help them to have it. You, you never saw anything that, you, that there's concerned nothing, you? There's nothing that concerned him. You I, never we, felt... We knew Michael. Right. We knew our son. We knew how we raised him. And we knew that, yes. Let's take another break. Let's come back and talk more about Michael, uh, more about his legacy, more about him as a businessman. I'll talk to you about that after the break. Back with me now exclusively is Michael Jackson's father, Joseph, and his former manager, Dieter Weiss. We'll come to uh, Michael's business side in a moment. I just want to ask you one thing, Joe. Do you, do you wish you'd been able to do more for Michael towards the end? Do you wish you'd been able to get in there Get him away from these drugs. Get him away from all I the doctors. I tried. I tried. I tried very hard. And uh, many times. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't get to him. Just like I told you earlier, that they treated him just like Howard Hughes. Mm -hmm. You know, you couldn't... You couldn't I, find that, I find that a fascinating analogy, Howard Hughes. I studied a lot of Howard Hughes's life. And by the end, he was completely protected. I mean, you couldn't get past the walls to get near him. Um, and it seemed like Michael, in his last few months, that was his life too. Yeah. But, but, but that's the way it was, and uh, it was hard to uh, get to. And maybe, you know, uh, his mother could get to him better than me. Because mm. naturally, you know, Catherine is, is a very good woman, and I love her much. I still do. And right now... They're trying to get my wife to, to divorce me. Yeah. Really? But, yes. But that'll never happen. You know, the people that surrounded them. Uh, when you say they, Joe, who are you talking about? People that surrounded them and around my wife. And people that's involved with her. Are these family members? Or any of so, the so, Some are and some are. Not, not my, none of my kids, no. Because they, they, they're not like that. It's other people that's around and, and, um, and they're trying to get you divorced so that they can get their hands on Michael's money, yeah. or what is it? Well, they got motives, you know. You know, they get if they get Michael's uh, mother away from me, then uh, me away from the mother. 
Then they got a free hammer. Right now, I'm the, I'm the in their way, you know. I'm, I'm the strong one. But the point is this. There will never be a divorce. And I was with her last night. Mm -hmm. And do you still love each other? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so if I didn't, then there would be some divorces going on. But it will never be a divorce, Pierce. And she would tell you that. I mean, you've been, she, well, she did say the same to me. You've been through <laughs> so much. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, that's I mean, the way. The, the problem is that Michael's empire is hugely valuable. And it will always attract sharks. Did let me bring you in here because you were uh, a business manager for Michael for a very long time. Uh, you've brought some fascinating tapes. These are audio tapes. And I want to just go through some of this because uh, I once interviewed Michael in the late 90s. And I was struck that there was another Michael Jackson here, the businessman. And I want to play uh, a tape before I come to you. This is him discussing with you, I think, uh, about a plan to buy Marvel, the comic business, back in 2001 or two, I think it was. Let's listen to this. We could easily go into Universal and buy, we would own Jaws, E.T., Close Encounters, you know, all the classics from, uh, from, from uh, Universal, own all of that stuff. And that would allow us to do a Universal, I mean, a channel, part of the Marvel channel can be not only the Marvel characters, but Marvel films like the catalog. We could do anything we want from restaurants to, to retail, theme parks. Now, you actually got the financing in place, I believe, for this deal. Then came the, the scandal court cases, and it all got put on the back burner. Disney ended up buying Marvel and doing exactly what Michael had predicted and making a fortune at it. Tell me about this. That was the second part of his life. He did want to do this, and he knew exactly any single detail what he wants mm. to do. And he was absolutely right. Because he was saying, so the music career, I cannot do more than that what I did. That, that's it. Uh, and I have the Beatles catalog on one side. If I buy this Marvel catalog, he has a second part, a big part in his life. He would be the richest person in the yeah, world. Yeah, he understood the, the power of owning rights to things. Right. I mean, I remember Paul McCartney giving an interview saying he couldn't even play some of his own songs because Michael had bought them. <laughs> right. uh, but that, you know, he realised the power of publishing rights, which yeah. is the same in music and movies and television and all of it. There were lots of reports when Catherine went missing for a few days that some of the members of the family, the siblings, had all fallen out with each other. What is the truth? The truth is that they had a big fight up there, and I wasn't there. So it would have been much different if I had been there. But you don't cut a tree down by cutting the top of it. I don't care how tall a tree is by cutting the top of it down. You start at the bottom. And Michael's three children, how, how are things going to work out for them? Are they going to have a lot of money, or are you going to try and protect that, make sure they're not too rich, too young? Wait, I don't think you can get too rich too young. You can get rich and be young with young rich kids. Well, you know, the trust is being set up for them, and I think that just started uh, just recently, you know. Uh, the, um, but they do get money, you know, going into a trust a retirement situation. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how much, but I know it's something. Let me play you one last clip of Michael talking, which is very prophetic given what we've just been discussing. We don't want to die knowing that we didn't, we didn't accomplish our goals. I want to die knowing I did it. I did everything I wanted to do, and I did it my way, you know? That's it. We changed the world. What would you like Michael's legacy to be? I'd like his legacy to be that's what he wanted to be. want everybody to care about him, and, and to love him and keep doing the things that what he wanted to do. And he wanted to make people happy all over the world. You see, Pierce, Michael's situation, if the world was like Michael, there would never be any wars. Everybody would get along. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of kid he was. Joe, it's been a real pleasure uh, talking to you. It's fascinating. You're one of the most uh, iconic fathers in the history of American entertainment, and I've never had a chance to sit down with you. I think well, you've been very I, honest, and but, but I've enjoyed yeah, it. Are we in enough with this now, or what? Do you, what else would you like to say? Yeah, well, well I, I got a documentary coming out.
Please. And it's a big one. T tell me about it. It's a big one. It's telling about, it's called Journey in My Shoes. Mm -hmm. and the reason it ain't out yet, because I'm making sure everything is right. It goes all the way back to the Native American uh, family. And what, what is the, the thesis of the documentary? The, the, the Journey in My Shoes. Yeah, tell me what it's about. It's about my life story. Right it's from the, start to finish. Right from start to finish, coming up. Joe, it's been a, a riveting interview. Thank you so much. I wish we could talk for longer, but we've run out of time. But it's been a, a great insight into your son. I'm so glad that you <laughs> came glad. and talked. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Promo Joe, other great to see you. And buy my stuff. Dita, thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Listening to the tapes was thank you. fascinating. And he was a complex man, Michael, in many ways. A great businessman, amazing entertainer, and, uh, and a great son, I think. And someone who had a father who maybe got a pretty rough rap over the years, perhaps unfairly. Joe, thank you very much. You take care, man. Dita, thank you. Thank you.